series on Bruno Mattei, Hell of the Living Dead. Um, this is probably his most famous movie and the one I'm guessing most people have seen, if you aren't actually familiar with Mattei. Uh, there's an interesting history to this movie, <clears throat> and the documentary is included on it as well, Hell Rats of the Living Dead, which is also on YouTube. And there were two scripts. There was originally a bigger, more grand scope script that Matei had and he wanted to do. And of course, the film company opted to go for the cheaper one that Matei did not prefer. Now, <clears throat> Matei's known for his schlock, but from what he talked about in this original script, it sounds pretty cool. I, I kind of wish somebody would have given Matei $20 million just to see what he would have come up with. So, the movie stars Margit Newton, who's a very pretty lady. Uh, she's in several of these movies right around this time era. And the... <laughs> so, part of this movie, the great part is just watching it. it it's... It starts out, <laughs> there's, they're in a uh, giant factory and they're doing radiation testing. And one of the guys is using his little counter to read radiation. And the meter is going like this, but there's a dial on it. <laughs> and while he's doing it, you can see him doing like, Oh, the readings, they're off the chart. And he's turning in the needle going back and forth. <laughs> I mean, God. Uh, <laughs> it's so cheap. Um... Then uh, the whole thing starts out, they, they're in some factory where there's rats running around and the rats have some disease that, of course, is going to turn by into flesh-eating zombies. And the rats crawl up and bite the guy inside his uh, containment suit, which is pretty wicked looking. And thus, the infection spreads. Uh, then it cuts to random European city, which... Uh, from the production notes, this was in Spain. Most of it was shot in Spain. And then they used a lot of stock footage from Papua New Guinea, which was used in all the Mondo films that he shot earlier. And that was inserted to give it an exotic locale and enhance the production value, make it look like a grander scope of movie where they're moving from a European city all the way to Papua New Guinea. And they rebuilt some of the sets to look similar to the stock footage you know, to reenact some of the scenes with the natives. It's actually not a bad idea. I mean, it's a, it's a great use of your finances, and that's one thing. Matei is a genius at maximizing no money. So, you got this group of um, anti-terrorist squad in these ridiculously bright blue uniforms. Maybe somebody wears those. I don't know. They seem a little absurd. I'm not sure. They're so bright. It's like, what the... Guys want to wear some kind of, like, maybe a gray or something, but not bright blue. What does that camouflage you with? Uh, they take out some terrorists, and we learn about the Hope Centers, which this is uh, where the infection started. It was a Hope Center. They do something. Uh, <laughs> they're experimenting with, obviously, things that are very bad for everybody. At any rate, that's just an introduction to these characters. They then get sent on a mission, which sends them to Papua New Guinea. Uh, Margit and her friend, they're playing reporters that are already there researching what's been happening to the natives. And you get uh, the scene where they're some type of a, I don't know, village-ish, like you'd see from missionaries. And there's a nice scene where the guy's holding a little kid who turns into a zombie. And, I, I mean, if you watch a lot of these movies, very, very few people are willing to touch on the whole kid thing. I know Fulci's done it, and of course Matei does it. So that's kind of, it's kind of cool just to see it in its brutality and, and just the sickness of it all is really cool. They... They've got some great squibs in this movie. They must have had a surplus of squibs. And, and that's why they shoot everybody in the chest, because it's much easier to pull off a squib shot in the chest than it is in the head. 
because these guys never seem to learn. They'll blast the zombies ten times in the chest before they ever shoot him in the head, and they do it every time throughout the movie, which is kind of uh, hilarious, but it's, you know, but it's, again, entertaining. This you're not gonna you're not gonna be bored watching this. It's fairly fast paced. Uh, at this point, the the soldiers arrive and meet up with the reporter group, and they kind of get together and do their stuff. There's uh, Margit's character needs to go investigate the natives. Well, they all decide they're going to, but she's gonna do it because she knows them best, and. In order to introduce herself to the natives, she should strip down, put on some weird face paint and a little, like, uh, grass skirt, and then run, bouncing boobs and all, for several minutes, until she gets to the village and then talks to them, and for some reason, after seeing the girl naked, they accept them into the village. The great part is... <laughs> There's no reason for this. It's total exploitation smut. Now, she does have quite nice boobs, so hey, great scene. They go through... There's actually quite a bit of locations in this. I mean, they're mostly houses, of course. And, you know, the village outbreaks, everybody gets munched on. There's the flesh-eating scenes throughout this, with the very end scene being one of the best or worst they take, you can tell what they're doing. They have a piece of raw meat that they're putting right like near their face. And as they bite, they're pulling the meat and then biting it and holding the meat against somebody's leg or, or stomach or thigh and pulling at it like this. Oh my God. It's just, <laughs> it's brilliantly hilarious. And one of the, uh, Anti-terrorism guys is Franco Graffalo. This guy's got the crazy eyes. You'll recognize him. He's brilliant throughout the movie. The guy is so over the top. Um, my understanding is he's a fairly famous character actor uh, from Italy. And God, does he just play it up. I mean, he's just all over the place of this. Mocking, you know, mocking the zombies. And, just, and the way he does it is so funny. I, you know, all in all, I, this is a really fun movie. Interesting. They have some cool music. It plays during the opening credits and a couple other times. Very, very interesting little score. And then there's Goblin, <laughs> which the Dawn of the Dead soundtrack is totally in this movie. Uh, apparently this caused some legal problems, which I can see why, because it's just totally stolen from it. I'm not sure how it ever got sorted out, but I found it kind of funny when all of a sudden I heard the Dawn of the Dead music. And Matei said that he was, you know, he, they wanted him to basically make a Dawn of the Dead ripoff. And he decided to do something a little more fun, as he calls it. This is it. This is a, a if you could imagine Dawn of, Dawn of the Dead being a lighthearted kind of fun movie, that's Hell of the Living Dead. Totally. And, and, you know, Matei does a great job. The gore is there, the violence is there, the silliness is there, and it all kind of works together in a nice way. Um, you know, he, at the the end of the movie, leaves it, of course, with the typical zombie apocalypse ending. Uh, no need to spoil it. It's worth watching this movie beginning to end. I, you want to watch a good, bad movie? Hell of a living day. Totally recommend it. It's a blast to get through. It's stupid. Um, I, you could come up with a dozen different drinking games to this. Watch it with your friends and what have you. Uh, as far as the movie, for a crap movie, I'll give Hell of the Living Dead a 9 out of 10. This is classic, classic trash. Uh... The DVD release, again, please give me a Blu-ray of this. It gotta have some prints somewhere. It, it's good. I mean, it's kind of grainy, but again, it's what you're dealing with. You get one extra uh, Hell Rats of the Living Dead. Not a lot. So, I mean, again, it's still a nice DVD. For the DVD, I'll, I'll stick it with a, a 9 out of 10 as well. I just can't see it being much better on DVD. We get a nice Blu-ray. 
nice 4K restore, some more footage, maybe, uh, I don't know, some extras. That would be really fantastic. So, I highly recommend Hell of the Living Dead. And next up on our Bruno Mattei Director Series, we're going to do The Other Hell, which was shot simultaneously with the true story in the Nemanza, uh, but released slightly later. So, I hope you enjoyed this review. Be sure to like the video, share it, give me any comments, anything else you want to see, and we'll see you here next time at Movie Mayhem.